from the corners of the internet to the wave signals in your brain. You are now synced into all aware. Against the norm you are expanding your mind and educating your soul. Your journey has begun. Let the transmissions commence. Welcome to reality. And you have made it to the reboot episode of All Aware. I am your host, Nathan Roshan. Tonight, Origins of Order. Who runs the world as we know it? Is there really a group of 13 families who control pretty much the entire world and influence greatly everything that happens in it? What is going on with this coronavirus? Is it a real virus? Is it fake? Is it a form of conditioning so that they can bring on this new world order, this new form of control? Is there anything we can do about it? It's all coming up next here on All Aware. Stay tuned. We will be right back after this. Today, no war has been declared. And however fierce the struggle may be, it may never be declared in the traditional fashion. Our way of life is under attack. Those who make themselves our enemy are advancing around the globe. The survival of our friends is in danger. And yet no war has been declared. No borders have been crossed by marching troops. No missiles have been fired. If the press is awaiting a declaration of war, before it imposes the self-discipline of combat conditions, then I can only say that no war ever posed a greater threat to our security. If you are awaiting a finding of clear and present danger, then I can only say that the danger has never been more clear and its presence has never been more imminent. It requires a change in outlook, a change in tactics, a change in missions by the government, by the people, by every businessman or labor leader, and by every newspaper. For we are opposed around the world by a monolithic and ruthless conspiracy that relies primarily on covet means for expanding its sphere of influence, on infiltration instead of invasion, on subversion instead of elections, on intimidation instead of free choice, on guerrillas by night instead of armies by day. It is a system which has conscripted vast human and material resources into the building of a tightly knit, highly efficient machine that combines military, diplomatic, intelligence, economic, scientific, and political operations. Its preparations are concealed, not published. Its mistakes are buried, not headlined. Its dissenters are silenced, not praised. No expenditure is questioned, no rumor is printed, no secret is revealed. It conducts the Cold War in short. With a wartime discipline, no democracy would ever hope or wish to match. You are listening to the All Aware Podcast on the True Man's Network. Every 26,000 years, the Earth goes through what's called a procession of the equinoxes. It's an event where the axis of the Earth completes an entire cycle. Uh, And during that 26,000 year period, at certain points, um, the North Star is different because this cycle draws a counterclockwise circle and literally kind of like a figure eight goes through the progression or the procession to where uh, it wobbles. Well, in 26,000 years, it returns to where it was originally. December 21st, 2012. I don't know if you remember that date, but that was the day that was predicted by the Mayans and 
some Native American tribes and other Indian tribes for the end of the world. Well, at least that's how we that's how we took it, right? It was supposed to be a prophecy of the end of the world. Well, we all know it was not the end of the world because we are still here, but it was the end of that cycle. And that brought on a new cycle. And the last five cycles from what we can theorize and what we have studied, we have found that it is most likely that this has occurred five times previous to now. Um, and in that five times, it has, uh, the cycle has ended in some kind of catastrophic event. So what has happened on this last fifth time? What happened December 21st, 2012? Well, nothing catastrophic that we know of, right? Well, the sixth world, or the sixth time of this happening, it is said it is to, supposed to bring on the age of Aquarius. It just so happens that this age of Aquarius lines up with this, and the age of Aquarius brings on a more... Uh, peaceful, loving, a more feminine driven energy to the planet. So some have predicted that after December 21st, 2012, we would enter into what's called a golden era, an era of peace and harmony and love and of more understanding and appreciation for each other and nature and of the world we live on. And so far, many people feel that they, they do not see that. You may be one of the ones, uh, you may feel that with everything you see going on, that that cannot be true. But, and this is, this is me talking from my um, experience, but in order, to, in order to understand and to experience joy, and love and happiness and understand how to produce peace and well-being you have to have gone through the opposite the old guard has to collapse the old paradigm the old structure of, of living has to erode and crumble what if in december of 2012 that started and what if today in 2020 it's beginning to end you're seeing all this come to a head now because just maybe we're entering into that golden age. Maybe we are returning to natural law. We have run on this man-made law structure for so... A structure of law that doesn't put humanity, doesn't put human rights and individual rights at the forefront. It doesn't necessarily put the needs of other living organisms at the forefront either. And it doesn't necessarily care as much as it might should for the environment. But a lot of that may have to do with the origins of order. You see, there has been a force that has been on this earth for eons. And that force has a lot of a lot of hate, a lot of selfishness, a lot of, a lot of uh, malice involved in it. It has been designed to produce as much profit for the individual as possible. And the type of profit that doesn't exist in nature, money, another man-made construct to show or express someone's worth, a physical exp expression of someone's worth, but it wasn't done fairly because not every human on the planet has equal opportunity to receive the same money, the same physical expression of their worth. And that's because this order of origins, this, this, I'm sorry, this origin of order has um, constructed and controlled this for probably eternity. 
So we need to return to natural law. And what if that's happening now? You might be asking, you know, what what is natural law? You might be wondering, what what do you mean our laws are man-made and they don't work for everybody? What what about the laws against murder? What about the laws against uh, crimes? What about the regulations that help uh, manufacturers make things that are safe for your consumption or safe for your use? I'm not talking about all laws. There are some that we've created that are good. But the founding, the founding morals of our man-made laws aren't necessarily in line with natural law. Natural law, it's, it's a higher moral law that exists independently of humans. It was not created by humans. It's universal. You have this in your soul you have this in your being because it's that compass within you that determines what's right and what's wrong everyone has this every conscious being has this it's a moral or legal validity of human law natural law concerns the relationship between the moral natural law and positive human law it is concerned with the moral principles that ought to govern political action, lawmaking, and adjunct adjudication, as well as the lives of citizens. It is a moral law presumed to be grounded in nature itself. A natural law is a norm for ethical behavior that is deemed binding on all humans because it coheres with the human essence or with the structure of the universe. You ever heard the statement that someone is grounded? right? Grounded being that they are worldly. They are, they have um, a good moral standard. Natural law can be known by reasons alone without special revelation that provide guidance for all humans and they enhance the common good, but they also render each person morally responsible for what they do. In other words, You may do something as long as it does not negatively affect someone else or hurt them or or cause unnecessary or unwilled harm. That's probably the easiest way to describe what natural law is. Do unto others as you would do unto yourself. What if we are returning to that type of environment? And what if that old power structure, who was all about more, 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 no matter who it hurt or who it ran over, is collapsing? And what if every prominent or most every prominent family and person on this planet who has any level of authority is a part of that? What if this origin of order has been in control so long that anyone, whether you have the willingness or the um, aspirations to change the world for the better, once you get involved with this order, it corrupts you. And either you play the game or you get or you get released. You get released from the game. You get tarnished in your character and you get made to look like a fool. So what if the last ditch effort of this control structure is to try to further enslave humanity by using technology, by using fear, and by using the old tried and true method of divide and conquer? What if they're so good at their game that they've been doing it so long that they think Since it's worked in the past, it will always work. And they decided to create a catastrophe. A catastrophe that is world-encompassing, that would require every nation to use similar tactics to try to thwart or overcome this. And that they, in their places of power and in their 
control structure that involves all aspects of our human businesses, including things that may or should have been naturally afforded to you, like util- you know, public utilities, water, housing, you know, a roof over your head, something to drink, something to eat, your health care system. What if they're so desperate because they see this coming that they've pulled their last ace and laid it on the table? And what if it isn't working? What if the internet and the connections between people have awakened at least enough of the world society to the tricks and to the games that they're not having it? And what if... And what if everyone wakes up and that order structure is eliminated? What would the world look like then? I'm going to take a break here. And when I come back, I'm going to go into the actual 13 families. We'll talk a little bit about who those 13 families are, where did they come from, and what do they believe that has made this world so dark and so impressive. Stay tuned to All Aware. We'll be right back right after this. If you are a fan of this show and the True Rants Network, visit us online at truerants.net. We're talking about the we're talking about the power structures behind behind this world that we live on. We're talking about the cycle, uh, the twenty six thousand year cycle that occurred and ended on December twenty first, twenty twelve, and how uh, going forward into this sixth world, as they call it, uh, that maybe this is the golden age. Maybe this is a time frame where um, all the old power guards are going to collapse and all the evil and uh, and luciferian beliefs that uh, control this society this world for so long uh, maybe their time has come their cycle has also ended and we will be uh, entering into a more a more peaceful a more humanitarian a more loving society as we enter into the age of aquarius the aquarius symbol represents Uh, a feminine, more feminine, loving, nurturing world as we enter into that. Perhaps that is why we see what we see. And I alluded to it earlier, but I did not say it uh, when I was talking about this, these forces and how they control the world. And what if they created uh, an event that was world encompassing that uh, they could respond to as saviors, as they typically do it, they typically do it in a more uh, localized manner uh, during uh, world uh, world wars and different conflicts. They uh, supply both sides of that, and then they uh, are the saviors of that through their many organizations and their companies that they control that that produce both the ugly side of that and and also the uh, rescue to those uh, attempts. And what if this time, uh, as I was trying to allude to, maybe this time they've done it on a global scale because they know their time is running out. So they created this coronavirus. There it is. I said it. What if they created this COVID-19 to globally, globally um, put the world at their fingertips to where if they if their tactics work, if they're able to recover from this and become the saviors through their vaccination programs or through their uh, conditioning from, uh, you know, societal standards and this social distancing and this quarantining that they have the whole world involved in, except for a very few uh, amount of countries uh, such as uh, the the Netherlands and uh, uh, very small uh, countries like that. 
But on a worldwide global picture, most everyone in all of the industrial uh, first world type countries are involved in some kind of conditioning. So what if this coronavirus is that end all be all? But what if it didn't work like they planned? Now, I'm not necessarily saying that the virus does not exist. Let's get that clear. I'm not saying that a virus does not exist. Does it exist? Absolutely, it can. And it probably does. But is it some world-killing virus? No. No. I don't believe so. But can it be used for their purposes? Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So who are these 13 families? You can look it up. I mean, you may have heard about it before. I know you've heard of some of these families. I can't get into every single one because there are literally 13. And that number is not uh, by coincidence. There are 13 families who essentially rule the world. But I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the most prominent ones that that you know about. And the first one that we'll go ahead and mention is the Rothschilds. The Rothschild family, those are the family members who own the entire world banking system. The empire began in the 1700s in Frankfurt, Germany, with a guy named Mayer Armschell Rothschild. Eventually expanded throughout the world into Austria, England, France, Naples, and and now the world. They own every central bank or or have control of every central bank of the IMF, which is the International Monetary Fund, of the IRS, and of all the major control uh, banking uh, lending systems that are worldwide. They are definitely one of these 13 families. They also You also have the Astor family, um, also originated from Germany. John Jacob Astor, He was established here in North America in 1783. He was a merchant in furs, instruments, and he eventually became a mogul of real estate. Uh, The Rothschilds also have a lot to do with real estate as well. Um, One of their most memorable properties that you may know about if you've ever been to New York City is the Waldorf Astoria Hotel. It's on Park Avenue in downtown New York City. They also have a a lot of other areas in new york named after them uh, astoria park astoria boulevard and i believe there's also a uh, a village in the queens area of new york city that is also named that's going to be another prominent 13 family you have the rockefellers you know about these guys john d rock and Fe- uh, john d rockefeller is the named the most notable of the family members and he started the standard oil company He's a controlling partner in Chase Manhattan Bank, also originated from Germany. Are we seeing a connection here? Hmm. Germany. Hmm. He uh, owns prominent real estate. The family now uh, continues to own prominent real estate, uh, notably the Rockefeller Plaza. And the family also has controlling influence in all the Ivy League schools. Yeah. I uh, don't know what you think about that, but when I read that, I'm thinking, uh, hmm. When you're thinking about uh, the education system, they obviously have a huge influence on what is taught and what is believed in the school system. A couple other families that I can't, I don't, there's not a lot of information on. You're you're welcome to search, uh, but a a couple of the other families that uh, are part of the 13 families would be the Bundy family. You have uh, the Freeman, Collins. Reynolds, the Russells, and then you got the Kennedy family. Yeah, we all know about the Kennedys, right? The American political family is originally from Ireland. Their name was O. Kennedy. That's their Irish uh, derivative of their name. Patrick Joseph Kennedy was the first Kennedy to hold a public office, and that was in 1884. And, you know, the we all know uh, John F. Kennedy the president that was unfortunately assassinated in Dallas during his presidency. 
several of his brothers and uh, cousins and family members were members of the uh, of Congress and held various positions in uh, government in the United States. And the family believes that they have a curse on them. A notable thing about that family, I I, I think uh, I don't know where the curse would have come from, but you know it, it may have a point because uh, <laughs> there has been a lot of tra- uh, tragedy uh, in that family with with their family members. When it comes to uh, John F. Kennedy uh, and Robert F. Kennedy's uh, assassinations and, and uh, the other family members who have died in, in weird and bizarre accidents, you have the DuPont family. I remember when I was a truck driver and I used to go to the a lot of the industrial parks throughout the, the country, I saw a lot of DuPont factories, right? They're controllers of chemical, the chemical industry, and they have high influence in General Motors and the auto industry. Uh, they started in the 1800s as a gunpowder manufacturer and uh, kept the family fortune together through arranged marriages, and it was typically between cousins. Uh, yeah, they, uh, they did participate in incest or inbreeding. Um, it was actually pretty common uh, for nobility back in those days, and who knows, it might still be. Uh, members of the DuPont family have also served in Congress and were a huge influence on the Louisiana Purchase and the Treaty of Paris. Uh, one family that I, I had really no knowledge of until I was looking into this was the House of Lee. The House of Lee were the individuals that were in charge of the Tang Dynasty uh, and were prominent uh, prominent family from Asia. You also have the Onassis family. You had Aristotle, Socrates, Onassis. He was the most notable of the family. He was from Turkey. He developed. He was a shipping tycoon and controlled interest in shipping channels and eventually developed uh, the airline called Olympic Air. Coincidentally, this. Aristotle Onassis married Jackie Kennedy after JFK's death. He was alive from 1906 to 1975. Yeah, so it's a pretty uh, awkward connection there. And then the last family that you would want to look into would be the Van Dyne family. There's not much uh, information on the Van Dyne family, but... Um, They are one of the 13 controlling families. And when I say controlling families, I'm talking about the bloodlines. That's how they they keep in control is through their bloodlines. It is said that most of these families, if not all, are Luciferian. They follow satanic beliefs. These families belong to the Illuminati or the Illuminated Ones. And believe they are destined to control the world. So look at the term Illuminati. Illuminati is a term for Lucifer. Lucifer was considered the morning star or the illuminated one. And is often worshipped by these individuals. You could say this correlates with the Luciferian agenda that has been pushed and is currently in the final stages of enacting. Uh, One of the doctrines within the Luciferian belief structure informs followers that they must reveal themselves in some way to the public. You'll see this a lot of times through symbols, admissions, pendants, and also through policies and regulations that they push through the varying government bodies that they uh, control or that they have influence over. There are several policies within the United States which fit these ruling elites' agenda. I can't go over every single one of those policies, but let's look at a couple important ones. The first one uh, we can talk about is Agenda 21. Agenda 21 talks about eliminating the middle class and to control the population. It pushes for a 93% reduction in global population. (laughs) You're talking about billions of people. Quite honestly, you're talking about probably 6.5% to 7.5 billion people. It just depends on where we're at globally with our population numbers. I'm 
Last I read, which was years ago, we were around 7 billion people. So we may be up more towards 7.5 billion at this point. But look up Agenda 21. Uh, you can find it online. It, you can find the actual, um, the actual uh, document online and read through that. It's several, several pages. And you can also read. There's some uh, things in there about, you know, helping with uh, global warming and um, environmental protections and things like that. But one thing you got to realize with these agendas, a lot of times is they will front as something very, um, very good for society because obviously that's the only way um, that's going to pass because they know that most people are are good and most people want um, safety and security and they want uh, the best for themselves and everybody that they know and are associated with and they want the best for the world. So you'll read a lot of that in, in a lot of these articles and a lot of these documents. But typically when they put that stuff in there, they also put in uh, they put in a byline where it's through their control. It might be through an organization that they're in charge of or that they run, or it might be through some kind of a tax that ultimately comes back to them. Whatever they do, they always have a controlling interest in that. This has also sometimes been called Agenda 2030. Agenda 2030 uh, states, and again, you can get this. This is a United Nations agenda. You can get it on their website um, by typing in Agenda 21 or Agenda 2030. It is a uh, longer document, but you're welcome to read all of that. And within that document, some say that it alludes to a one world government, a cashless currency, a one world central bank where all money will be filtered through a military that is provided by the United Nations and is a one world military. What would be the point of that? Why even have a military? You know, (laughs) the end of national sovereignty. The end of all privately owned property. The end of the family unit. A depopulation agenda. Mandatory multiple vaccines. A universal basic income. Because a lot of people probably won't be working. A microchip society for purchasing, traveling, tracking, and controlling. This doesn't sound so far-fetched now. If you look at what Bill Gates is talking about. And what others are talking about uh, in the controlled media uh, and your CNN and your nightly news programs. And it could also do this through vaccines. They're also talking about in this system uh, a, a social credit system. Something like maybe what ha- China has now. Where your social status and things that you do and say and uh, maybe even things you post on social media will all link into your social credit, your status, 5G appliances for monitoring. Children will be raised by the government. Schools, colleges, and universities will be owned by the government, which already basically happens, but there are some some that are not. All businesses are going to be owned by government and corporations. Well, this agenda is going along pretty well, isn't it? Look at the collapse of the world economy. Look at the collapse of the United States economy right now and how when we are reopening, there are many talking about how businesses aren't essential and they don't want them opening. And a lot of them are small businesses, barbershops, like your certain stores, your churches. Hmm. We can go to Walmart, but we can't go to church. Interesting. This Agenda 2030 may end private transportation, owning cars. Air travel might be restricted to essential air travel only. They don't want you going anywhere. That's going on almost almost going on right now, too. You, In order to travel now going forward, you have to have a state ID. But not just any state ID. You have to have the RFID state ID. 
the smart chip in your driver's license. What's that for? I don't know. Human beings may be concentrated into human settlement zones. Cities. Hmm. That seems to be happening. I don't know if you've looked at the real estate markets, but they're building a hell of a lot of stuff in these major cities. Are they anticipating a huge uptick in residents? I don't know. A lot of apartment complexes and a lot of housing being developed in these major cities. Wow, you know, there's always growth and there's always need for new places to live. I'm talking about huge buildings, huge, vast complexes of apartments, condos and other structures to house residents. And, and, and places like Dallas and uh, Cleveland and Columbus, places like uh, Orlando. What, what do we need? Really? Who's moving there? Could be the end uh, of irrigation. Well, I, I, you know, obviously I think there should be an end of pesticides um, and, and poisonous chemicals being sprayed on our food they're talking about the end of irrigation so they control farming could be the end of private farms altogether and grazing livestock single family homes may be eliminated non-synthetic drugs and and naturopathic medicine and organic uh, medicine may be banned where you have to buy uh, prescription drugs or something through the major pharmaceutical companies the end of fossil fuels Fossil fuels have always been known as an abundant source of energy. They may be trying to eliminate that. And while there are, you know, may be, there may be conversations we can have about the benefits of that, they might not be ending it for your benefit. They might be ending it for theirs. And you rely on this United Nations conglomeration of personnel to supply you with whatever energy you need to run whatever it is you need to run. So that's Agenda 2030 or Agenda 21. So look into that. The most recent thing that happened in May of 2020 that I actually uh, was surprised to see was uh, HR Resolution 6666. Huh. That's not Luciferian in any way. That's not satanic in any way. Why 6666 for the resolution number? I'm almost positive that that's not where they're at in their numbering system. But this is a bill that was introduced into the House of Representatives in May of 2020 that allows for the formation of a unit to trace and track citizens even as far as entering into their homes to remove traced persons. Yep, it's real. You can look it up. It's on congress.gov. Type in HR Resolution 66666, and you can read for yourself. It's out there. And these are the agendas that are out there. And remember back when I told you that those who believe in the Luciferian doctrine, who follow satanic beliefs, it is said to them that in order to be right with their religion, if you want to call it that, they have to get out there. They have to put out their beliefs. They have to put out who they are in some way. Like I said, you'll see it in symbols. Look what some of these prominent higher um, public figures are wearing around their neck. I've seen upside down crosses. I've seen uh, swastikas. I've seen six pointed stars. I've seen uh, bullheads or or what some say is is Moloch, which is some kind of demon goat thing that they wear around their necks or their clothing. And we're seeing it in these agendas. So now let's go back. Let's, let's go back just a little bit so we can trace a little bit of this back. You had, uh, I don't know if I want to. So let me go back to these ruling families for a little bit. This origin of order. Let's go back to the Rothschilds. I want to mention that they are contributed, uh, they are contributed with being the creators of this Illuminati 
this one world religion, which they eventually want us all to um, partake in. Uh, the Illuminati, some of the branches of that would be the Freemasons. Um, most societal structures um, that you see under the Freemasons are based on pagan beliefs. Actually, that's not even a Freemason thing. That's just in general, if you, if you look throughout uh, the world and in, in, in our society and some of our structural systems, a lot of them are pagan. A lot of them are pagan belief structures. Uh, stay tuned. I'll be right back here on All Aware, and we'll go into more of this origins of order in the media chain of command. Right here. Ladies and gentlemen, the very word secrecy is repugnant in a free and open society. And we are, as a people, inherently and historically opposed to secret societies, to secret oaths, and to secret proceedings. We decided long ago that the dangers of excessive and unwarranted concealment of pertinent facts far outweighed the dangers which are cited to justify it. Even today, there is little value in opposing the threat of a closed society by imitating its arbitrary restrictions. Even today, there is little value in ensuring the survival of our nation if our traditions do not survive with it. And there is very grave danger that an announced need for increased security will be seized upon by those anxious to expand its meaning to the very limits of official censorship and concealment. That I do not intend to permit to the extent that it's in my control. You are listening to the All Aware Podcast on the True Rands Network. If you are a fan of this show on the True Rants Network, visit us online at truerants.net. And we're back here on All Aware. I am Nathan Roshan. We've been talking about the 13 ruling families of planet Earth. And we've talked a little bit about the astrology cycle, uh, the 26,000 year astrology, astrology cycle that happened. Uh, the last uh, cycle started again on December 21st, 2012. Um, and we talked a little bit about uh, these agendas. Some of these agendas that uh, have been brought out into the public eye that hold some pretty concerning uh, statements in them and seem to be ushering us towards a more controlled, more technology, uh, technically controlled society where we are monitored and we are we must do what master says. And if you go outside of what you are told to do, then there may be consequences or, or punishments. Now, how would they get to this level of control? Well, conditioning, social conditioning through programs like Operation Mockingbird. Operation Mockingbird was a program that was developed during the Cold War, which allowed the CIA to infiltrate the media to propagate and deceive the American and world public to influence public opinion to what they wanted you to believe. The program later evolved into wiretapping, and they also funded certain media, including Hollywood, to produce films that conditioned the human belief structure. This is a real program, guys. This happened. And there has never been anything to state that this program had, has ended, because it has not. It has not ended. And even if it had ended, something, if you don't already know, that you may sh may realize about these programs and these people is that they do not end something. They may just change the name or change the program or go more covert 
with the program. So they have their ways to influence and control society through information. Information is literally your power. If you have wrong information, you're not able to develop the correct uh, train of thought to know how to respond and how to react and what to do over a certain situation. So influencing through controlled narratives is a very good way to anticipate what a society and what a person is going to conclude and believe and do. They started doing it in the in the 40s and in the 50s, Operation Mockingbird. And also in the 40s and 50s, a little bit off topic, but not really, was Operation Paperclip. This was 1945 to 1959. We won World War II, right? Yay, we won World War II. We're bringing the troops home. Everything's good. No. Well, did you know we're also bringing over 1,600 scientists from the German Third Reich into America, and they were given jobs at the CIA and other establishments. This also included war criminals in U.S. custody. Did we win World War II? Doesn't sound like it. It sounds like the Nazis transitioned into a more covert power structure and then came to America, infiltrated us, and have been running their scheme ever since under covert closed doors. Now, it has been claimed, and I have no way to verify this at this point, but it had been claimed that Hitler was one of these, that he did not die in in a war strike, that he changed his name, and he lived in the United States until his death. This could have happened. This may be the real history. I've said in previous episodes that history is often written by the victor. It is not written out of truth or out of what really happened, because you need more than one side of a story to figure that out. It's only written by those who are on the winning side of that. And it is morphed and it is manipulated and it is given out in the best light possible for that entity or that control structure. How would you feel if you learned that that's what happened? Well, guys, uh, we didn't really win World War II. We're going to actually fold because there's some really cool shit we found out going on uh, underground over there uh, in Germany. And apparently they got some crazy shit technology and like UFOs and stuff. And I don't know. I think we're just going to fold. And I think we're just going to let them come over here and infiltrate our country. And uh, we're just going to let them do what they do just so we can have access to all that stuff. Uh, there's some shit about aliens and stuff too. I don't, I think we're just going to do that. If you heard that, what would you, what would you have done? What would you think? You would be outraged. That would not fly with society. That would not fly with most people. Millions of, of people being killed in, in gas chambers and, and during the Holocaust. That wouldn't have flew, right? So during the 50s, another origin of, con- of uh, order, another control structure was Operation Mach- uh, I'm sorry, Operation MK Ultra. It's Operation MK Ultra. Started in the 1950s, probably still going on today. It was where experiments were done on human subjects in mind control and behavior influencing techniques. The program was reported to have been seen being used in Nazi concentration camps. Oh, imagine that. Nazi concentration camps. Oh, wait, we just talked about Operation Paperclip, where from 1945 on, they were bringing these scientists and and, and prominent leaders of the Third Reich into the United States. Now, in the 1950s and beyond, five years after that operation started, we're talking about behavioral experiments and mind control techniques and torture being done on the population. And this is something that was done in Nazi concentration camps. Come on. There's a connection. 
The program ultimately determined what it takes to break a person's spirit and reprogram them. There was another operation, Midnight Climax, which used prostitutes to lure victims into a room where they were given drugs, also experimented on. These are the techniques, people. And this is the 50s. What year is it now? It's 2020. You know, 60, uh, 70 years. 70 years of this, these, these programs, these operations, these techniques. You don't think they have it down to a science now? You don't think that they're really effing good at what they do? They also have technology now, which started back in the 40s too when they discovered a lot of the stuff that they were doing over in the not in the nazi germany they brought all that over here they've been experimenting on that for years and years and years and back then they were looking at lasers they were looking at death rays that they could put up in space and shoot down on uh, human subjects and kill them in the 1940s and 50s we're talking about death rays something that was that was imagined and produced by Nikola Tesla. They had this stuff, or at least they were developing it. What do you think they have today? This is where I try to I try to stay calm, but it, it upsets me because I think we all need to be aware. We need to take off the blinders and realize there is technologies and there is stuff out there that you would blow your mind away. It's unbelievable. Because we have been fed information that has kept us 50, 60, 100 or more years behind thinking that, you know, this is just normal evolution. Thinking that the way the world has ran and how it is, is always been like that. It's human nature. It's, it's happenstance. It's random. It's not. It has been organized from an order of of control structures that have been put in place by the most prominent and most elite and rich families and people of the world. And once they, and, and even those who are not part of the family, if you are dragged into this, if you work for these families, these corporations, and you don't pull your weight, you're gone. They find someone who will. There's always someone who will. So to think that there's no organized structure, I'm sorry, but the preponderance of evidence showing that it has been orchestrated far outweigh that of a randomized coincidental system. So over the past decades, there have been whistleblowers, there have been independent researchers and, and, and individuals who have known something isn't right. And unfortunately, some have been have been discredited and called kooks. Some have been murdered. Some have been, uh, have gone into hiding because they may have been too close to the truth. And if they would have let that out, that would have been detrimental to themselves, maybe their families. But that's when you and I come in. That's when people that don't know anything <laughs> about the, not exposed to these families who don't really have connections into these ruling elites, that's when we come into play. It's much harder to control us, but it's also much easier to discredit us. And that's where critical thinking comes into play. That's when your intuition comes into play. What sounds right to you is probably right. What what you formulate as your belief based on things that you experience, your observations and what you hear is more the truth than anything else. Why would what somebody else tells you be more believable than what your own intuition and your own understanding can rationalize as the truth? So luckily, since the internet has evolved, we have had individuals who think critically get on board and research and collect their own information on what's going on. Through that effort, many have found that there are others who have discovered the same truths and a movement has been born. These include people from top government officials to scientists to public personas and movie stars to your neighbor next door. They've all band together. They've shared information. And the expose 
of the origins of order has begun. The chains that have bond civilization for centuries is being unraveled. It has worked. It has actually worked so well that in the last push to control humanity more aggressively, their agendas have been exposed and, and society has pushed back. This has made their attempts more overt and visible. The black swan event that wanted, they wanted to create with the coronavirus is not working as planned. The control measures that they have put into place worldwide is not working as planned. People are simply not complying. They are not wearing masks because it doesn't make sense when you know the science behind viruses. They are not staying indoors when they know that based on what was told about this virus, going outside is not a bad thing. Sunlight, warm weather, being out in nature can have beneficial effects on a virus. And not only that, why would you want to live your life confined? Whether you live or die, you need to live life. And they, and when that didn't work, they started putting out this narrative, well, it's not about you, it's about others. It's about the elderly, it's about everyone else. Absolutely, we should care for everyone else. But by a person living their life normally under these circumstances, it is no going to put no one else in any more danger or jeopardy than anything else. If you are a compromised immune person, you shouldn't be out anyways. And if you choose to go out, which I believe you should, because I'm always under the impression that you should live your life regardless. But if you are that person and you choose not to go out, then that would have been your lifestyle to begin with. Because there's always something out there that can affect you. There's always something out here that can kill you. And every year, there is viruses, there are bacterias, there are radiation, is all this stuff that can hurt you. And we never lock down the world. That's how I know that this is the last step to control this society and bring on the future of a controlled police, not just state, but world. And how do we fight that back? Knowledge. Knowledge is power. Learning everything, critically thinking, exposing truths, not falling into censorship. You cannot censor something and say it is not true. Now, if someone is posting videos to three-year-olds of people chopping other people's heads off and yelling death to America, death to humans, whatever, yes. Can you censor that? Yes. Because that is disgusting and sneaking and death and deathly influential on a child or on a human being of any age. But when people were sharing their stories, their their beliefs, their opinions, they're sharing their research, and they're sharing what they know, doctors and scientists, lawyers, and whoever else, maybe themselves because they work in a facade of the field where they know things are not what they When they come out and say something and they are censored, that is when you know that there is another agenda at hand. Typically, if someone would come out and say something that was crazy, guess what? People just said, hey, that's crazy. And they went on about their lives. They had the choice to believe or not believe something. Now, there is one agenda, one set of information who are forced to believe that if you even try to go and believe something else it's censored if you if, if, if any kind of information gets out there that receives millions and millions of views on facebook or youtube or any of these controlled structures of social of our, our new social lifestyle and it's censored that is not freedom my friend 
I'm running way over time here on the episode, so I'm going to have to end it today. But next week, we're going to go into The Great Awakening. We're going to talk more about uh, what the good things are to come in this world. What does a peaceful and golden age of society look like? And when will it happen? So tune in next week to All Aware. I am Nathan Roshan, and you are all aware. Thanks for listening. Good night.